So what does diuresis mean? We talked about this when we were talking about um, blood pressure. The loss, of water. loss of water in the urine, right? So diuresis is urination. So what do you think the presence of ADH, antidiuretic hormone, causes? If it's antidiuretic, right, you retain water, right? So it's the opposite. So this causes you to retain water, okay? So when it is present in blood, right, it causes water channels to be inserted in the collecting duct, the collecting ducts. Okay. So we haven't talked about movement in the collecting ducts yet. So water can be drawn out via osmosis if those uh, protein channels are water, they're called aquaporins, they're little proteins that allow water to be sucked out. And so we say that this is um, a type of water reabsorption that depends upon the presence of the hormone. So when not present, right, um, water is not reabsorbed. And the urine is more dilute. So this means we have concentrated urine. So this is actually a hormone that's produced by your pituitary glands. And it responds to solute concentrations in your blood. So like, for example, if you take in a lot of salt, let's say you eat something really salty, you're going to get thirsty. And the reason why you're getting thirsty is because your brain has detected that you don't have enough water to dissolve and to um, dilute the salt that you've taken in, right? And so what then is going to happen is you're going to get thirsty, but you're also going to produce antidiuretic hormone, and it is going to go to your kidneys via the circulatory system. It's going to bind to receptors on the cells, and it's going to cause those cells to insert channels that, that will allow the water to be drawn out. So not only are you going to be thirsty, but you're also going to produce more concentrated urine because you're going to retain water. Okay, does everybody kind of see that? Okay, so let's go back to our little drawing right here. So I'll put H2O if ADH is present. So that's if. So if a, the ADH is present, there's these little channels that get put into the cells that line my collecting duct, and water will just be moving out passively because of this difference in the concentration gradient. So it just kind of gets sucked back out. Okay? And so if ADH is not present, water cannot move, and then it gets urinated out. So all has to do with the presence of that particular um, hormone. And it's kind of interesting to note that you can actually drink too much water, right? So if you, in the past, they had those, like, how much water can one person drink kind of contests, right? And people can actually die from that. Because once your, your ions get so, and your sugars and everything gets so diluted and your kidney is not capable of keeping up and pumping the water out, then everything is just too dilute and then your nervous system shuts down because it doesn't have the proper ion balance or glucose balance, right? So you can drink yourself to death. Yeah. I don't know, but my students told me that they had there was a competition, like a radio competition, and people were just chugging water, and yeah, it caused a person to heal over. You know, their kidneys were not able to keep up. Okay, so this production of this concentrated urine is due to that difference in the concentration that's all set up by that juxtaglomerulus apparatus. Okay. 
no, yeah, juxtamedullary, sorry, the juxtamedullary um, nephrons. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about, we're going to end a little early today, is kidney and blood pressure. So when you think about it, the kidneys get like 25% of the blood um, every time it circulates through the body, it goes to the kidneys to be filtered. And if the blood pressure is too high, then you can damage your filtration membrane, you can damage the glomerulus. But if it is too low, then you don't get enough filtrate being produced, okay? So two, if the BP is too high, right, you can damage the glomerulus. And this is what sometimes happens in kidney failure, right? Uh, diabetic. So diabetes can cause damage. And cause, I'll put renal failure. So oftentimes the blood pressure, people that are diabetic also have problems regulating their blood pressure. They're regulating their glucose and so sometimes it causes, uh, oftentimes it causes renal failure and then they actually have to go on dialysis. So this, right, um, means that you must have dialysis treatment. What is that so if you are diabetic, oftentimes um, a, uh, something that goes along with it is that you damage your kidneys because of blood pressure. And so this can cause renal failure and so people with renal failure um, build up uh, urea in their, in their body and it becomes toxic. So their blood becomes toxic. And so they have to go to a special treatment center. Actually, now I think you can get machines at your house, but generally you have to go to a dialysis treatment center. So like they have one out at the tribes, right? And you have to just sit in there and what they do is they just withdraw your blood and they put it through a machine with a dialysis membrane that acts like your nephrons and it cleans the blood, and then they put your blood back in after it has been, all the nitrogenous waste has been removed, okay? So a dialysis machine just mimics what happens in your kidneys, okay? Okay, if the BP is too low, if your blood pressure is too low, right, this means that not enough filtrate is produced. Right? And so what this means is, is that you cannot effectively um, cleanse the blood. You can't effectively get rid of all the nitrogenous waste and everything you need to get. Okay. So this means that the kidney needs to regulate um, blood pressure, and it does it by a couple of ways. So there's cells near the kidney, actually near the glomerulus, that detect blood pressure. So they actually have little receptors that can detect the blood, the pressure of the blood on the blood vessel. And they cause two things to happen. Okay, the first thing is, is that a chemical called renin is released into the blood. And renin is an enzyme that converts angiotensinogen to angiotensin. So angiotensinogen, you've seen this word inogen before. Does anybody remember where? Pepsinogen, right, in the stomach, that means it's inactive, right? So this causes this conversion, renin does. And so angio, think angio, think angina, think blood vessel, and this causes tension. So this causes vasoconstriction. So what this does is this boosts the blood pr pressure. So this increases the blood pressure.
causes vague vasoconstriction of the blood and it causes an increase in the blood pressure coming into the glomerulus and that renin goes out through your entire body and will cause an increase of blood pressure throughout your entire body. So the kidney is actually central to regulating blood pressure. Okay. The other mechanism is through a hormone called aldosterone. So this causes aldosterone to be released. You spell that right. Causes aldosterone to be released. This is actually from the adrenal gland. You don't need to know that. But what you do need to know is this increases sodium reabsorption in the nephron. And this increases water reabsorption. And remember how I said that if you increase the blood volume, you increase blood pressure. So the kidney has two mechanisms to boost blood pressure. And then if aldosterone and renin aren't produced, then blood pressure can stay low. Right. But the kidney plays a role in systemic body-wide blood pressure regulation. So when your kidney fails, that is just kind of cascading events of all the things that your kidney does for you, and one of them is regulating your blood pressure. Okay. Um, I think that's where I want to stop. Actually, let's talk about the kangaroo. Kangaroo rats are really cool creatures. Oh, I need to talk about the urinary system. Okay. So the kangaroo rat, this is a really interesting organism. We actually have them in Oregon. You can catch them with little traps if you set them out. They like peanut butter. I've caught them with peanut butter before. Kangaroo rats um, produce no, or they don't drink water. This is the key. They don't drink water. They do, yes, they hop on their hind legs. So what this means is that they produce very little urine. So they're actually ideal pets. I've, I've mistakenly got guinea pigs. And I swear the guinea pigs they produce, they just urine, I mean, it's like constant. They drink and urine and it's like, huge amount of urine, right? Having a kangaroo rat is much nicer because they don't hardly urinate at all. Okay. So, um, but unfortunately, they're native, right? So you can't buy them at pet stores. So you have to catch them if you want a pet. <laughs> they don't sell, it's kind of this conundrum. You know, it's think, you think that it'd be better to have native animals at the pet store to sell instead of non-native, right? But then they're worried that people are going to capture them and then depletes the populations. And so that's why you can only buy exotic um, species at pet stores, which is kind of, it's kind of a weird thing. But anyway, the thing about these guys is, is that they have very long loops of Henley. And this means that they can produce super concentrated urine. So because they don't drink water, they get all of their water from the metabolism of their food. So when they break down carbohydrates and proteins and stuff, water is produced during that breaking down. And so it's kind of amazing that they can get almost all the water they need for the seeds and the nuts that they would naturally eat. And so this is an extreme example, right? If you think about beavers, they actually do not have long loops of Henley. So when you compare this, to a beaver, right? They are fresh water. So we'd say they're fresh water. So they drink lots of water and they produce very dilute. So they have short 
loops of Henle. And their urine is not nearly as concentrated, right? So they produce dilute urine. So we even see physiological adaptations in the kidney to different, um, uh, to different ecosystems when they live in different ecosystems. So this would be physiological adaptation. Right. Okay. So the last thing I want to talk about is just the urinary system. So the urinary system would include the kidney, right? And there's two of them. The kidneys, as we saw in the dissection of the rat, sit kind of way back in the back. They're actually said to be retroperitoneal. They sit way back in the back of the body, and they're kind of surrounded by fat, which kind of cushions them and holds them in place. But the kidneys have a renal pelvis. And this collects the urine from the collecting duct, ducts from all the nephrons. So I'll just put collects urine from all the nephrons. Okay. Then it is transported via the ureter. So the ureter is part of the urinary system. This transports the urine to the bladder. And the bladder is smooth muscle. So when we urinate, the smooth muscle can contract. Right? But we have partial control over that because we can keep the sphincter closed. And we can store the urine. And then it moves out through the urethra. So the urethra transports it out through the body, or out of the body, out of the body. Transports urine out of the body. OK. Now in the male, it trans in mammals, right? It transports it out. Um, it's the same duct, so it transports the, the, transports the sperm and the urine. So this would be out through the penis. The female has a separate opening. So the female's urethra, the vagina, and the anus are all separate. But in males, the urethra combines with the reproductive system. So there's actually only two openings in males. So this combines um, in the male. Right, the reproductive duct. So it has ser two serves two purposes. Okay, so in your book there is a diagram of the urinary system. Okay, oops. Okay, so this is the ureter, right? It comes down. It actually kind of enters here. This is be the bladder, and then this is the male that comes out. This is actually showing the prostate gland. It comes out through the penis um, and out um, to the body via the urethra. Okay. So we'll talk more about that um, in uh, the prostate gland and the bladder and such when we um, talk about um, the reproductive system. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there for today. And I will see you guys tomorrow in lab. We're gonna be doing um, a diving reflex experiment. So we need somebody who can hold their breath while placing their face in water. Hopefully somebody in your group will volunteer. <laughs> and holding on to blood pressure, or not blood, yeah, a heart rate monitor at the same time. Thank you.